All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Krista Dillabaugh, and I am the director of the Morpho Institute and um, the lead on our professional learning experiences in the Peruvian Amazon. Um, it's great to see some familiar faces on here tonight. Um, Diana, Kathy, Jen, uh, Andy, um, they were all with us in the field last summer. So thanks for jumping in and, and hanging out with us tonight. Um, we wanted to give everybody who's been expressing interest about our field programs a real thorough overview um, tonight of the two programs we're going to run next summer. And so we have, um, we do have an agenda for the evening, but before we do that, I just wanted to introduce um, any of you who don't know who the Morpho Institute is. Um, we're a fairly young nonprofit, um, but we're working on um, over almost 30 years of work in the Amazon. So Nonprofit status came in 2015, but we've been working down there since um, the early 90s. So um, as a result of this new nonprofit status, um, our vision is really um, a world in which the Amazon is treasured and protected. Um, we are all educators that founded this organization um, and continue to work in education. And so our mission is to harness the, the power of education in realizing this goal of um, Amazon conservation and sustainability. So that's just the underpinning a little bit about who Morpho Institute is. So um, we invite you um, as of tonight to join us in this work and we sure hope that um, some of you will, will join us in the Amazon um, next summer for, for quite an adventure. So for tonight's agenda, um, I wanted to do just a little bit of introduction about why the Amazon, why we work there, why it's important and then certainly give you an overview of the programs that we offer and the study sites where we do our work. Um, a little bit of information about how we prepare for this experience um, and the preparation um, courses that we have to get you ready to go. And then of course, dip in a little bit into travel and logistics um, and certainly allow some time for, for questions and answers. Um, my uh, colleague, Marissa Copan is gonna be monitoring the chat. Um, so please do feel free to Put your questions in there and if everybody wouldn't mind just putting in there where you're from where you're where you're zooming in from tonight and maybe how you found out about um about this opportunity um that'll give us some things to start connecting around so that would be terrific so let's jump in and just talk a little bit about why in the world the amazon um we've been hearing about it for for a long long time um it's back in the news again and um, it's one of those places that is now being viewed, um, as, as it rightfully should, as a, a very critical global resource that matters to everyone, no matter where you are on the planet. Um, it is um, a massive area. Um, this is obviously a satellite image from Google Earth, and this very dark area right here would be what we would call the Amazon Basin all of which drains into the Amazon River, which moves from west to east over to the Atlantic, um, carrying massive, massive amounts um, of water, which uh, um, impact global climate, um, carbon sources, all, all biodiversity, um, you name it, the Amazon's um, a player in, in any one of the current um, crises that we're facing. Um, to give you a little bit of scale and size, if you overlay the continental United States over the top of the Amazon basin, um, it's about the size of the continental U.S., a little bit larger than that. Um, and there are actually nine countries that are responsible for its um, overall health and maintenance, um, Brazil being the largest um, landholder um, of, of Amazon territory, um, Peru coming in second in, in that um, effort. So um, it's also an incredibly large watershed um, holding about 20% of the world's fresh water. Um, the amount of water moving through this system, both um, terrestrially and atmospherically, um, definitely impacts regional weather patterns throughout the basin, also can have impacts on the global weather cycles um, um, and climate around the world. So again, when we say critical resource, um, it truly is just that. Um, biodiversity, um, spectacular biodiversity. Um, it is the mother load, if you'd like to call it that, of species diversity. Um, it's both a um, museum for biodiversity and it's also a source of biodiversity. Um, a lot of the global genetic stock um, originated in the Amazon and has spread out where, outward um, from, the, from the equator um, into other parts of the planet. Uh, these photos here are just a small sampling of some of the biodiversity that we see when we're in the Amazon. And, and each of these photos has actually been captured 
by one of our participants um, over the over the course of the many years that we've been working working down there. So um, absolutely spectacular biodiversity experience um, while you're in the Amazon as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, back that one up a little bit. Um, and we would be remiss if we also didn't mention um, the very important role of indigenous um, cultures and communities within the Amazon. Um, it is home to over 100 or 500 um, indigenous nations, um, several of which are still technically what we would call uncontacted. Um, but the interesting thing, and I apologize for the, the very detailed nature of this map, um, there is a direct correlation between biodiversity, overall biodiversity health, and indigenous protected territory. So when you overlay those two things on top of one another, um, there's, a, there's an emerging body of data and research that indicates Amazon rainforest that's being cared for and nurtured by indigenous groups is by far um, the most stable and biologically diverse places on the planet. Um, and so we um, always incorporate indigenous perspectives um, and working towards deepening their conservation efforts and supporting their conservations um, in the areas where, where we're privileged to do our work. Um, um, as, as the ethnobotanist Mark Plotkin likes to say, um, rainforests, and particularly the Amazon, hold answers to questions we have yet to ask. Um, there is still so much to know about these forests, and we, we really have very few people actually doing that work, um, considering the scope um, of the place in which they could do that work, and, and also just um, the, the rapid rate at which it's disappearing. Um, as you can tell, um, and you've probably seen in the headlines, Amazon deforestation um, has continued despite best efforts. Um, it is getting a little bit better as of the, the end of 2023, um, thanks to some policy and governmental changes, particularly in Brazil. Um, but deforestation is the number one um, issue with loss of Amazon biodiversity, Amazon land cover, Amazon forest, um, and also putting carbon back into the air. Um, the headlines are not terrific. And so we continue to ask ourselves um, as educators, what's our role in all of this? And our answer as an institute is, is you all. Um, it is getting educators into this space, into this place, deepening their understanding of, of why it's important, why it's valuable, and um, giving them opportunities to make deep and meaningful connections, not only with the ecosystem and its biodiversity, but the people that are there um, that call it home, whose home place this is, and the very ones that are working so actively um, to save it. So our role is making those, those really important connections and providing educators with the opportunity to experience that. Um, just a, a real quick sort of a brief history, if you're wondering, well, like, who is this organization and how long have they been around and, and what's this all about? Um, as I mentioned when I started, um, way back in 1992, um, the very first teacher workshops were actually hosted in the Peruvian Amazon um, with our, our current partner and longtime partner, Explorama Lodges. Um, the very first educator academy in the Amazon, our flagship program as the Morpho Institute was launched in 2013. Um, in 2018, we then launched the Morpho Institute um, to be the new home, the nonprofit home of the educator academy. And then in 2022, we believe it or not, we celebrated our 10 year of, of that flagship program. And then last year, we successfully um, did a 2.0 pilot of our brand new Amazon research initiative for educators. So we have a very long history of working in this area um, and are continuing to expand and grow and um, deepen our impact um, in different ways, um, but all through the lens of education and, and getting educators connected to this place. So let's have a very, um, quick look at, at the programs that we're offering and where our study sites are. Um, I, I would hazard a guess that most of you are probably coming into this having heard about the Educator Academy in the Amazon. Um, it is our flagship program. It's the one we've been running for a long time. Um, that program has run um, since its inception um, from July 1 through 10 um, every single summer. Um, Despite the two years of COVID, we didn't make down there in COVID, um, but we're happy to say we've been doing, we've been at this for 10 years. Um, it is a place-based inquiry workshop. Um, it really focuses on making deep classroom connections um, between the educators visiting and, and the place that they're experiencing and their home place. 
Um, it focuses on field studies and how to do those with students. Um, and it also has a, a deep connection to community-based conservation with our, our nonprofit partners and indigenous partners in the Amazon. The Amazon Research Initiative for Educators is our brand new program, um, and that runs um, the, the second half of July, July 11th through the 20th. And this is, this is truly a field research and biodiversity monitoring course um, run in partnership with the Amazon Conservatory for Tropical Studies um, and a, a ever evolving and expanding cadre of, of tropical ecology researchers who head up the research projects um, that are designed to help um, assess biodiversity in this part of the Amazon that, it, that is critically important. So I'll, um, we'll, just, we'll just do a little brief overview of each of these. Um, I'm always available for questions and deeper digging deeper into this to figure out which is the, the best fit for, for you. So um, the Educator Academy, as I mentioned, um, it is truly an interdisciplinary workshop um, it focuses on place-based inquiry. So we are fully immersing ourselves into the Amazon and taking the um, place-based educational model um, as, our, as our touchstone on how to connect teachers more deeply to this place with transferable activities and workshops and resources that they can then go back to their home place um, and replicate or expand upon when they get back home. So the Educator Academy was originally conceived as a, a professional development program in the Amazon. And so classroom connections are hardwired into that program um, every single day and in every single workshop. Um, we, we base that uh, um, off of an inquiry model um, and we actually um, conduct field investigations and lead you through um, an observational field investigation um, and other types of field investigations to, to get you comfortable with that in this amazing ecosystem. Again, very transferable back to the classroom, um, back to the K-12 classroom, I would add too, because we do, um, depending on the breakup of the group, um, we do try to, to tailor, tailor things to meet the needs of elementary, middle school, and high school um, educators, all within this same program. Um, it also has a very strong threat of community-based conservation, um, meaning that conservation that is coming out of indigenous communities and out of local communities, and we are being responsive and supportive to that in, in the work that we do with them. Um, we have a whole cadre of resources and faculty and equipment um, that underpins this, this field experience. Um, Christy Reddick and Jess Honecker of the Bug Chicks, um, younger entomologists that specialize in not only entomology, but making connections to the classroom through social emotional learning and bugs. Um, they are lead faculty on this program. We use resources from the Pacific Education Institute. Um, many of their field STEM resources um, are absolutely spectacular and, and perfectly um, adapted and applicable to our work there. Um, Pocket Lab loans us some environmental sensors um, for teachers to use while they're in the field. Um, and then we also um, have strong partnerships with, with CONAPAC, um, which is a Peruvian NGO that works with over 50 communities, um, small communities up and down the Amazon and Napo rivers. Faconomai, which is the Mayhuna Indigenous Federation. Um, and then One Planet, that is also another conservation um, organization that is working to protect in, indigenous rights in the area. Um, so all of these sorts of resources, um, whether they're tangible resources like field manuals or people like the bug chicks or communities like um, Conopac, are all part of this Educator Academy in the Amazon. Um, it touches, as I said, it's, it's multi-interdisciplinary, um, so it certainly touches on K-12 science. It certainly focuses on ecology and natural history of the tropics. Um, STEM is STEM is incorporated into that field journaling, field notebooking, um, certainly geography, global studies, cultural connections, indigenous perspectives, language arts, even SEL. All of these things are woven um, throughout the field program um, and facilitated by our our faculty that that help all of the the daily workshops that we run while we're there. A typical schedule for the Educator Academy um, is getting up early and doing some early morning wildlife watching and birding, um, typically, but not always by boat because we are in a, a massive watershed. So we do try to spend quite a lot of time out on the water when we can. Um, we have morning field workshops that are, again, always related to and tied back to the classroom. Lunch, another afternoon field workshop, again, with classroom connections. 
um, pre-dinner roundtable discussions, dinner, and then follow up, following up if you're still standing with um, night hikes and night boat rides. Um, you know, we cover we cover everything from basic tropical ecology to ethnobotany to how to work with arthropods in the classroom to how do you do a field study with students or what does it mean to really get out there and, and make observations. Um, so we work through all of those different workshops and and all of this is outlined um, obviously in much more detail in the syllabus that that you can pull offline um, and we'll happily share with you. Um, in, in any other um, follow-up communications that we have about tonight's uh, webinar. So um, the Amazon Research Initiative for Educators then is an entirely different program. Um, it, is, it is geared um, for educators that are very interest, interested in taking a deeper dive into the, the world of tropical field biology. Um, the theme of the program is monitoring biodiversity in a changing world. And we have worked with Morpho Institute faculty and a number of other faculty from different organizations like the New York Botanical Garden, um, SUNY Binghamton, Miami University, um, to come up with some long-term biodiversity monitor monitoring projects that teachers can successfully jump into, learn about, participate in, collect data for, um, and then help file field reports on those topics um, after, they, after they return from the Amazon. Um, we've been wanting to do this program for a long time because we have the great privilege of being able to do our work um, within the Napo Sukasari Biological Reserve, which is owned and operated by Explorama Lodges. Um, it's literally about 4,000 acres with a field station and a canopy walkway. And so we have full access to all of that. And it is, it's an amazing site for conducting tropical ecology field work. Um, there have been luminaries that have done field work at this site, um, but in the, in the re most recent history, um, there haven't been as many researchers down there as we, we feel should be down there doing that work. And so we've, we've sort of reinvented what we could do with this spot um, and feel strongly that educators participating in this kind of research um, in partnership with field biologists would be a great place to start. Um, and so one of the foundational things that we started this past summer is, is some basic species inventories, um, starting with orchid bees. Um, and the participants were actually conducting orchid bee field assessments, um, collecting specimens, learning how to catalog them, the whole process of getting them into the, the museum in Lima um, and working with um, the experts that, that, that run this program with us. Um, so we're really trying to put this idea that um, tropical research um, can be done by, by educators is a powerful tool and an educator's toolkit, um, and that it is all part of the conservation of, of this amazing place we call the Amazon rainforest. And so providing the opportunity to do this, this field research, um, we hope will help put conservation and research in, in its proper context and, and bring teachers into that conversation, into that equation. So this particular program really focuses on field research skills and protocols, science communication, data collection and analysis, um, and then of course classroom applications because we want this to come back to the classroom. Um, but it really is about giving you the opportunity to, to be on a field research team and participate fully in, in that work um, with the, the researchers and the, the experts that are down there doing that. So um, just to give you an idea, species surveys, this is our classroom out at the field station. Um, the, the, the team was um, collecting, they were collecting orchid bees, these brilliant green bees um, from the forest floor and from the canopy of the rainforest. It is the very first um, survey of orchid bee species in this part of the Amazon. Um, and these teachers helped contribute to that. Um, Kathy's on the line tonight. Kathy's right here in the, the gopher wild headlamp. Um, kind of was kind of dim in that um, in that little classroom, even though it doesn't look like it, but they were they were learning how to mount and prepare specimens. And these specimens were all taken um, to the Natural History Museum in Lima. Um, the other thing that we did is um, there's a researcher that's interested in studying the beetles and the mites that live on beetles that actually live in heliconia plants. And so again, the first survey of beetles and their associated mites in this part of the Amazon. Um, and when we can get our hands on other fabulous um, organisms like um, this morpho butterfly, we, we always stop and, and take a look at those as well. Um, so it was an exciting summer. Um, in addition to that, we set up the first plot surveys um, to monitor um, light gaps and tree falls and succession in this part of the Amazon. 
Um, and that in included acoustic monitoring and abiotic factor monitoring and learning how to set up plots and how to measure things and what to look for. And then we also worked with the herpetologist, Lindsay Swark, um, who uses models to assess predation pressure on Amazon um, reptiles um, in the Amazon canopy. So believe it or not, we hung over 150 um, clay models of reptiles up in the Amazon, up in the canopy of the Amazon um, and checked on them daily to see what kind of um, predators were, were giving them a little taste. Um, and so this is all part of Lindsay's research and um, her field team were responsible in, in making that all happen um, over the week that we were together in the Amazon. So again, a typical day um, for the, the ARI program or the Amazon Research Initiative for Educators program. Um, again, we get up and we do early morning wildlife monitoring. And then we have field work with our research team. So we're out actually doing the field work. In this case, they were setting up um, the plots on the very first day um, and determining where the insect traps were gonna go, um, a big hearty lunch. And then um, we're either back out in the field doing field work in the afternoon, or we're doing the data processing that needs to be done with, with specimens or um, you know crunching numbers or whatever needs to happen. Um, always have pre-dinner discussions um, not only to make classroom connections, but to dive deeper into some of the content and some of the expertise that's in the room. And then almost without fail, if everybody again is still standing, um, there's always the option for night hiking or setting up black lights to look for insects um, and the like. So again, um, we will officially open this up to um, non-alumni in 2024. Um, the last two pre-pilots or pilots of this um, were just conducted with alumni to help us get this off the ground. And um, if we are um, um, fortunate and we, we have enough people that, that sign up to join this program and we have a mix of alumni and new participants, um, we're hoping to set up a little mentoring um, partnership so that alumni of the program that have been to this part of the Amazon before, I should say alumni of the Educator Academy, have been to this part of the Amazon before. If they're coming back to participate in the research program, um, we're gonna ask them to step up and do a little bit of mentoring for any new participants who've never been to this part of the Amazon or even into the tropics, just so that everybody feels comfortable and prepared um, and fully ready for the, the experience. So um, wrap up the airy part of it. Um, we it, It's a lot of hard, sweaty work, um, but we love it. It may or may not involve machetes. Um, but we are, again, really looking at field studies for biodiversity conservation. Um, we have projects on iNaturalist that we're cataloging all of this in. eBird, of course, which is, these are two citizen science um, projects that, that we contribute to and our data is contributing to. And, um, and then the field reports from this last summer will be coming, um, hopefully, hopefully done and wrapped up by the, the middle of October. And those will be coming out and being shared publicly um, with this first round of of information and, and field reports from this first team that, that pulled this all together for us. Okay, now the fun part, that, although that wasn't fun, that's, that's the most fun, but um, to give you some insight on where we work and, and a little bit more on who we work with. Um, we are based in Peru. So down here, this is the capital of Peru, Lima, which, is, which sits on the Pacific coast um, on the west side of the Andes. We actually do our work way up here um, in the Loreto district, um, just outside, well, not just outside, you know, 50 to 100 miles outside of Iquitos, Peru. Um, if we drill down a little bit closer, um, this is um, the Amazon River flowing this way. Here is Iquitos down here at the bottom. Um, that's where you will come in and out of. You'll fly in and out of Iquitos um, via Lima. Um, and then we get on we get on the Amazon and we head down um, to our primary study site, which is out here at the the Axe Canopy Walkway and Field Station, which is just off of the Napo River. And the Napo River actually drains out of Ecuador down to the Amazon and then contributes to that flow that goes all the way out to the out to the Atlantic. So our first um, our first stop, at least for the Educator Academy. Um, is at Explorama's Explorama Lodge. And um, I just cannot say enough about Explorama and the partnership um, and the, the platform that they provide and facilitate work. Um, they have been in business in this part of the Amazon for over 50 years. Um, they have done it all, they have seen it all. Um, they treat us all like we are family. 
um, we just have the the most incredible experience because of the infrastructure that that they provide to us so that that we can go play and have like literally have science camp in the Amazon um, and uh, and not have to worry about so many of the log logistical details that they help take care of us um, help take care of, of for us. Um, the other site that is there is, is the Amazon Conservatory for Tropical Studies, which is a smaller field station, um, much more remote, um, where we spend the, the majority of our time. So to give you an idea of what um, where these locations are, again, Explorama Lodge, down here is Iquitos again. This is the Amazon. Explorama is just off of the Amazon River. And then the other, this is, sorry, this is what the Explorama Lodge, the accommodations here, um, are wonderful. They're comfortable. Um, you you do have ensuite bathrooms, um, cold water showers, but ensuite bathrooms um, at this particular lodge. Um, they are built in a traditional style with ear pay thatch roofs, um, covered walkways to get you from from place to place. Um, you know, an absolutely lovely and and great place to start start your Amazon adventure. Um, the forests that Explorama protects around their lodges are incredible. Um, huge, big buttress root trees, fabulous trails, um, nice biodiversity, um, perfect place um, to dig into field investigations and um, studying and, and professional learning experiences in the Amazon. Um, we also, as I said, to the extent that we can, depending on water levels, um, we are out on boats quite a bit. Um, doing wildlife watching, um, maneuvering from one lodge to the other, um, and taking advantage of that cool breeze in, in the morning or in the afternoon as we're as we're going from one site to the other. Um, we we try to spend as much time, you know, balance that out when we can, depending on water levels. Uh, the second site that we go to is the Amazon Conservatory for Tropical Studies, and as I said, it's it's up here just off the Napo River, and it is um, it literally backs up to two major conservation areas. Um, just take a take a little look at that map there. And one of the first things you probably should notice is that there's no roads um, bisecting any of this. Um, it is a remote location. Um, the facilities reflect that. Um, but again, we are we are in incredibly good hands and in an incredibly comfortable, wonderful, biodiverse place. Um, it is a it is a simple field station. Um, the rooms, again, thatch roofs. Um, covered walkways, smaller facility. However, um, we sleep under mosquito nets. The rooms are open to the outdoors. Um, we have um, very clean and wonderful um, pit toilets, um, latrines, and then also cold water showers. Um, but the added bonus um, can be hammocks. If we can get the hammocks strung up, a common dining room um, it becomes a very intimate space um, where teachers really do bond and make friends for a lifetime and have, um, you know, pretty much 24 seven access to all of the faculty too. Um, neither one of our programs are programs where faculty come in for an afternoon and then take off and, and go do their thing. They are with us the whole entire time um, and actually um, donate their, their time and talent to this program. Um, not one of our faculty to date has ever um, taken a stipend to, to do this work with us. So for that, we are incredibly grateful. Um, and the bonus of all bonuses is at the Amazon Conservatory for Tropical Studies, or ACTS as we call it, um, is a quarter mile canopy walkway. Um, folks, this is unprecedented. Um, we get to do our, our work here over multiple days and have unlimited access to a quarter mile um, walkway through the Amazon canopy layer. Canopy layer is where 90 to 95% of all the biodiversity lives in the Amazon. So for us to be able to have this as our playground and be able to do a vertical study from top to bottom across the quarter mile acre is just absolutely um, spectacular um, and incredible. And then to be surrounded by faculty and working with faculty who um, have spent many, many years working in this environment is, is just a, a complete and absolute added bonus. Um, the view is, um, Magnificent. This is the view off of platform six, which is actually a double platform in one of the emergent trees. And if you if you know anything about um, structure of an Amazon rainforest, um, most picture books and, and textbooks will tell you that there are multiple layers, the emergent being those trees that stick out above the canopy um, and provide views like this. Um, and this actually is a view out across um, one part of the million acre conservation area. Um, of our partners, the indigenous Mahuna 
of Peru. So again, we are we just have an incredible playground um, in which to do our work and get to share with all, all of you. So um, very quickly, I just wanted to introduce quickly the, the team behind all of this. Um, uh, we have an, a small executive board, all educators, um, Dr. Kelly Kina on the left, Dr. Nancy Troutman, um, former education director of Cornell Lab of Ornithology, myself, Krista Dillabaugh, um, who's the, the volunteer director of all of this. Um, we, have to doc, we have Dr. Ro Ruiz, um, who's an outdoor education specialist, um, all around um, amazing natural resource person um, and an absolute amazingly engaged educator um, of all ages. And so um, Mo or Ro heads up our, our educational um, engagement initiatives um, and takes a very big, strong lead and role in the Educator Academy um, as, as a, she did her dissertation on awe and professional development and um, she did it in the Amazon. So there's no better person on the planet um, to be helping teachers figure out how to make these connections and what these awe experiences can mean to them and their students. Um, we also work with Dr. Lindsay Swark. Um, she's a herpetologist. She's the director of our research programs. So she's the one of the forces behind the new Amazon research program. We have a longstanding um, relationship and collaboration with Randy Morgan. Um, he is the um, emeritus entomologist curator from the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, and he has been on every single educator program since 1993. So um, if there's a man that knows teachers and knows Amazon arthropods, it would be him. Uh, Christy and Jess, uh, Jess is on the left, Christy on the right, um, AKA the bug chicks. Um, they have joined our team recently within the last three or four years. Um, they bring a whole new level of energy and, and make some really amazing SEL connections um, for teachers um, back to their classrooms um, using bugs and arthropods and overcoming fear and um, just, just an amazing duo that, that brings so much joy and energy to the program. I, it, it's incredible. Um, Rob Naxi, um, PhD botanist from the New York Botanical Garden. Um, he's actually the curator of North American um, botany, but his passion is not only these pitcher plants, which are carnivorous in the United States, but also um, neotropical beetles and the associations they have with heliconias, which are a, a really fascinating plant species in the Amazon. So Rob joined our team and he is one of the co-creators co of <clears throat> the research program that, that we've talked about. And then um, finally, we have um, amazing guides that we get to work with. Um, these three gentlemen have been on every single Educator Academy since the beginning. Um, they are also helping facilitate um, the, the new ARI program. Um, Roldan here in the middle and Cesar were part of the research team for this last ARI program. Um, and we're full and 100% participants in, in all of those research projects. So they they continued on in their role as guides and helping us, you know, learn everything we can about the Amazon and, and you know, making sure we're on time and keeping us safe. But it, it was an absolute delight to be able to work with them um, as co-researchers on these research projects. So incredible people um, that are family for us and, and will become family for, for you as well. Um, last but not almost least, um, or I should say not least, um, certainly almost not last, um, our indigenous community partners, the Myhuna. Um, we started this collaboration with them in 2018 and have worked with them over the last several years to develop field workshops, um, community-based education and conservation workshops that are helping them sustain and uh, protect their indigenous territories. So that has been a huge new addition to our, our faculty. Um, we, we view them as faculty um, and, and I think they, they view us as a, a valuable resource. Um, they absolutely adore working with teachers because teachers are the best learners out there and ask the best questions. Um, and so it's just been a really wonderful evolution over the last uh, four or five years um, in getting to work with these, these amazing um, conservationists and, and human beings um, as they struggle to, to conserve their, their ancestral lands. And then last but not least is all of you. Um, these programs are run by educators, um, but these are these we are facilitators. We are we are bringing you into this space and and co-creating this experience right along beside you, um, bringing our expertise into the room just as we ask you to bring yours. And so 
Um, it is, I will say, after doing this for, for over well, on, on nearly 15 years, um, 10 years officially with the Educator Academy, it is, it is an incredible privilege to be in the room, um, when I say in the room, in the Amazon, with educators um, that we've that we've gotten to work with, um, watching them lean into being the these exceptional teachers and building community and camaraderie with their peers and um, letting us um, be a part of that and learning from them and with them throughout throughout both of these programs. So um, it's it's an incredible group of teachers that um, we've gotten to work with be, thus far, and we're looking to uh, forward to adding a new cohort um, for 2024. So one last thing um, that I think is, is really critically important and I think um, sets us apart from, from maybe some other um, international teacher programs that, that you could possibly be looking at. You know, we, we continually ask our question, question um, you know, as a, as a nonprofit, are we really making a difference? And, and if so, how and why? Um, we have, let me just back up a second. We have, we have done retrospective interviews and assessments. We know we're making an impact on teachers. Happy to share those, those reports and data with you if you'd like to see it, or if an administrator would like to see it. Um, we know that that's happening um, and we have the data to prove it. The other piece of this, however, is, is not just educators in the United States and their students, but, but what about Peru and what about conservation in Peru? Um, and, and I just want to highlight for a moment this, this collaboration and partnership that we have with the Myhuna um, and just how impactful that is on, on the program and on the teachers who get to participate it, on it, in it. And then also um, we hope and are working towards um, impacting their conservation success story as well. Um, they are, there are four Myhuna communities they are responsible now for over a million acres of ancestral lands and, and primary rainforest, um, undisturbed for the most part primary rainforest. There had been some initial logging that came in that had decimated parts of this conservation area. The Myhuna were successful in ousting those loggers and the poachers that came with them. And in 2015, they were granted um, the right back to the management of their ancestral territories. We came into the picture um, shortly thereafter and helped, um, came up alongside them and said, hey, you know, we'd really like to be part of this, this ecotourism, um, these educational workshops you want to lead. We think we have the right audience. We want to introduce you to some of our teachers. What would you think? Um, and we have since then every year continued to work with them um, alongside them. In, in creating field opportunities and field workshops that help sustain them um, in a small way economically. Um, so you will have the, the, the privilege of getting to visit one of those Myhuna communities and getting to know those community members. Um, again, we've been at this with them nearly from the beginning um, and have been in the focus groups and the working groups, um, working with the community elders and the community leaders to develop these, these field workshops that, that our teachers now get to participate in. Um, one of the project is, projects is a very large stingless bee honey operation. Um, so we've helped help them figure out how to develop workshops that would be meaningful and resonate with teachers and other ecotourist visitors. Um, and you'll get to experience all of that. We have honey tastings. You'll get to see how these hives were traditionally harvested, how they're doing it sustainably now. Um, all sorts of big global conservation sustainability lessons um, in real time right right in front of you um, and you get to participate. We also get to work with, with community members who are more than happy and willing to share their, their knowledge of local biodiversity. Um, and in this case, the, the types of fish that, that frequent their waterways, the fish that are now coming back now that the poachers and loggers are gone, um, how, they, how they sustain themselves on this incredibly important resource in the Amazon for them and their families. Um, you'll be invited into their homes to learn how they how they do this, um, how they process their their fish and their food, and how they catch it when we're on the river with them. In addition to that, oops, sorry. Um, again, learning from not only um, community men but also community leaders um, that are women. Um, women take a very big role in leadership in this in these Myhuna communities, and it's been an absolute delight to see someone like Marina here in the middle grow and evolve in her capacity as a workshop leader. And now we, we, we come in and we watch her with a new group of teachers and we watch her with her own group of students, other young women in the community that she's mentoring and, and training to help them learn how to be um, workshop leaders and facilitators and come up with ideas for sharing 
sharing their stories as women in the community, but also as, as leaders in the community. So again, really powerful and um, thought provoking and personal experiences with with real people doing real hard work um, and real important work in, in the Amazon. Um, all this to be said, um, one of the reasons why this is this is such an important part of our work, um, again, it's not just education for US educators, it's getting the word out about this conservation success story, but also the imminent threat that is coming along um, that they're facing. Uh, the Peruvian government has proposed a road that would bisect the conservation area and um, we are working with the indigenous Mayahunas supporting them through these workshops and in, in other ways through our Climate Action Fund to help provide them with the resources they need um, to build capacity and, and fight this, this road. Um, we are certainly not doing this alone. Um, we are a, one of many, many organizations that are, are working and supporting them in their effort to stop this road and maintain autonomy um, in the heart of their in their conservation and, and ancestral lands. So again, this is a very quick overview um, of everything that we're doing. Um, there's so much more that you will learn and be a part of um, before, during, and after these field programs. But we wanted to give you a real taste of, of the kind of work that we're doing and, um, and give you a feel for what some of the, some of the options are um, for participating and joining us in this work. So, I'm going to keep plowing ahead. I know Marissa is going to interrupt me if there's if there's burning questions in the in the chat, and I'll, I'm going to leave time. I promise um, for Q and A at the end. Um, just real quick, pre departure prep. Um, we strongly believe, I mean, we are educators after all. That that when you um, join a Morpho field program, it begins well before you start packing your bags. Um, it is critically important that we provide you with with resources and a network and a community in, in which to get ready for this experience. So as I said, you will be joining um, a community that's now over 200 educator academy and area alumni strong. We have a private online community that you will be invited into um, that is our hub and our portal for communicating with you and alumni um, in preparation for these field programs. We have very robust resource kits that go out um, that are customized for each of the two programs um, to help you bring this, this project um, to life in the Amazon. And then also when you get back home, um, we have prep courses um, that will begin in January that help you not only build background about the Amazon, but make classroom connections, um, particularly for the Educator Academy. That is how that prep course is designed. Um, there's background readings on like basically Amazon Ecology 101, but then there's a lot of conversation about how does this relate back to my classroom. For the ARI program, it's really taking a deeper dive into research and getting up to speed on the background of the research projects that you're going to be involved in um, so that you can get into the field and, and be a full, more than just an assistant, um, but an actual full participant in that research when you get there. Um, and these are all run on, on Canvas. Um, and, and facilitated in, in different ways by um, different, different leaders in, in the Morpho faculty and, and um, um, executive team. So um, you can also start connecting the Amazon to your classroom today. We do have a, a K-12 resource, resource bank that we are continuing to add and expand through the, the help of alumni of our program. Um, we collect articles and research. All of these things are available for free and you can you can jump right into those today um, and start making those connections. Um, and again, when you when you join one of these field programs, you'll be part of that larger alumni network um, and can connect with other educators in your in your area, in your at your grade level, across the country. Um, a whole different a whole bunch of different things going on behind the scenes um, for alumni of our our program. Okay, travel and logistics. Very quickly, um, Educator Academy, July 1 through 10. That means you need to be in Iquitos by the 1st and we'll be leaving on the 10th. Amazon Research Initiative for Educators, July 11th through the 20th. You will be need to be in Iquitos by the 11th and departing on the 20th. Don't worry, we hold your hand. We have a travel partner, um, EcoTeach, that holds your hand. We'll make sure all the flights that you book are all the right ones. and. Um, you're, you're not on your own. Um, the minute you sign up, we're, we got your back the whole entire time. So not to worry about that. 
Um, the program fees, um, both programs um, run at the same cost. So it's $32.50, that includes the Morpho Institute program fee, which you need to think of sort of curriculum, resources, faculty, the programming part of it. That part of it is $825, um, an incredible bargain when you, when you begin to realize what all goes into this program and, and what you get out of it. And then the, the travel and logistics piece of it um, for your room, your board, ground transportation when you're in the Amazon, all of those things, that's $24. Um, 25. So the grand total, um, not including airfare to Enquitos, is, is 3250. Um, so just wanted to put that out there for you so you kind of know what the numbers look like. Again, all this is on the website for both programs. Um, payment schedule. Um, registration will actually open up on September 1st for both of the, the programs, the Educator Academy and the, the research program. Um, within um, once you Put your registration form in, we'll send you an invoice for your non-refundable deposit, which will hold your place on the roster um, for the program of your choice. And then that will then trigger what happens next, um, getting you connected to EcoTeach, and then within 30 days, getting your travel deposit deposit paid and, and figuring out what the travel, um, the rest of the travel payments will look like for them. And then balances, both to Morpho Institute and EcoTeach will be due later on um, in the spring. Once you're all registered and decide this is the thing for me, um, we will have um, other webinars like this one that will really dive into all of these details in, in, in depth. Um, we will talk about travel insurance and all those fun things that you're going to want to think about um, after you've said, yeah, I want to do this. Um, scholarships and funding um, always comes up. Um, we know this is critically important. Uh, the Morpho Institute, um, we again are a small nonprofit, but we, we contribute a, a fairly good sizable chunk of money into teacher scholarships and fellowships. Um, those scholarships and fellowships, um, there's a link on the, on the website for those. Um, those scholarship applications will open up on September 1st as well and will be due by December 1st. Um, you should also be looking at Fund for Teachers. You should be looking at the NEA Foundation. Um, you should be talking to your local school. Um, foundation, if you have one, your PTO, any PD monies that you you may think your school may have, um, go um, go go flush that out. Um, we have teachers that come into these programs with a multitude of different sources of um, funding, partial or full, um, and it does run the gamut. Some of it from us, some of it from these other organizations, which which are amazing. Um, links to Fund for Teachers and and the NEA Foundation are on our website as well. Um, and all of our scholarship and funding on the details of all of that are um, on, the, on the website. We also, um, for the first time ever, have a teacher nomination. Um, you cannot self-nominate because you're eligible to apply for um, our scholarships, but you can suggest strongly that someone else nominates you. Um, and so that nominated teacher form is also um, on our website and, and that has to be done by a colleague or an administrator um, that would nominate you for um, a scholarship to join us to join us on um, in the Amazon. So again, more to come on all of that, but um, all of those things are are on the website and, and readily accessible. Um, real quick, just because um, this this pandemic is is not done with us yet. Um, I just want to put this out very clearly. Um, we have been back in the Amazon twice. Um, you know, things have officially lifted um, internationally when it comes to restrictions on getting in and out of most, if not all countries. Um, that certainly is true for Peru and for the United States. Um, we do ask that everyone be vaccinated for COVID. Um, and anything else that you should be vaccinated for um, coming into the Amazon. We do operate out of a remote field station. Healthcare is not close by. Um, it's not easy to get to. Um, and it is not um, what you would expect um, as, a, as a resident of the United States of America. Um, we can get you help when you need it, no doubt. We have, we have all of those procedures and protocols in place. But when it comes to things that um, you can preventably, preventably be taking precautions for um, COVID is one of those. Um, if if you would get COVID for the first time and are unvaccinated, um, Peru, Peru is probably not a place where you want that to happen, um, especially if you have any any compromising issues. So we do ask that everybody be vaccinated, that you comply with U.S. and 
approving protocols and comply with our protocols because we certainly want to be engaging with our Peruvian friends and colleagues in the in the most safe and respectful way um, we can. So I'm just like you and living for the day when I don't have to use the word COVID anymore, but um, we still we still do, um, at least for now. So just wanted to put that out there. Okay, all that being said, um, we hope um, very much that you will join us, um, that, that we can help you find your awe, restart your awe, re-engage your all, expand your all, whatever, whatever, whatever status your all is currently at. I, I am confident that this these experiences in the Amazon will will take it to a whole new level. Um, so we do we do invite you to join us. Um, we would love to have you and um, look forward to to seeing some of your registrations coming in. Um, so again, those will open up on September 1 at, at 12 p.m. Eastern. It's first come, first serve. Um, so um, mark your calendars, check things out send me an email, um, DM us on social media. Um, we're happy to answer any and all questions that you may have so that so that you can feel confident about, about joining us in, in Peru. Okay, questions. Finally, Krista's done talking. Um, <laughs> feel free, I'm gonna stop sharing right now. Um, feel free to unmute, ask questions. Put them in the chat. Um, Marissa, if there's things I need to answer, please um, unmute yourself and um, let me know what questions I can answer. I think you've answered most, but one was about learning Spanish and if we need to. Um, okay, this is this is all about true confessions. My Spanish, even after all these years, is um, toddler grade probably, so no. Um, you do not have to learn Spanish in order to be able to participate. Um, is it an added bonus? Absolutely. Should you try? Should you get on Duolingo, learn a little bit? Please do. Um, but it certainly is not necessary um, to take, um, you know, full measure of either one of these programs. Um, Everything is conducted in English. Um, and if it's not, then, then we have translation, um, you know, folks that can help um, make those connections. If you are a Spanish speaker, um, that's fabulous. Um, we will ask respectfully and politely if you'd like to help, you know, uh, facilitate conversations with people. Um, and you can certainly say yes or no to that, depending on your comfort level with that, but um, not necessary. What else? Thank you. Um, another question was about like, how bad are the bugs down there? And what should you do? Yeah, excellent question. Always, always comes up. Um, my my answer to that is it is um, it's rarely for me it's rarely as bad down there as it is for me up here. Um, I, and true confessions again, 